Hi, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Monaco and welcome to the 2023 Monaco Yacht Show. Very excited to be here. It's my favorite time of the year. It's always sunny in Monaco. They should make a TV show called that. Behind me here, you got one of the largest boats in the marina for the show, Corinthia 7. And then over here, you've got uh, Lady Lara, which is also a big boat, 90 meters plus boat. There's a ton of boats here to look at over the next four days. So stick with us and we will show you the best of the show. Now behind me here is Moti Yacht Kensho. This is a, an unusual looking boat. Uh, not as unusual as some of the boats at this show, I have to say, but this is a, a strange design, strange color as well. A green color, I don't see that very often. She is effectively a new yacht, uh, delivered in 2021. She won the Super Yacht of the Year for the World Super Yacht Awards. Uh, the Nemo is the most prestigious prize that you can win at that event. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about these boats individually because we're going to do a video, largest boats of the show, and Ken Show will be one of those boats, along with uh, Lady Lara and uh, Corinthia 7 out there. The boat was built by the Italian Sea Group, and they've got a really impressive showing on today, actually. Um, this is the setup, and we walked past here just a couple of days ago, and this did not look anything like this. It looked like a uh, very basic um, setup, uh, tents and stuff. They've done a fantastic job at uh, uh, creating this, what looks like a permanent structure, but it's just been set up for four days, which is quite amazing. So they've got a really impressive show on here, uh, really impressive setup, shall I say, at the show. As you can see inside, let's have a quick glimpse inside while it's quiet. Look at this, incredible. Go over here now, look at this. This, uh, I feel like I've just arrived on the set of the next Star Trek movie. This is the strangest looking thing that I've seen afloat, I think. I've never seen quite anything quite like that. It is called Motor Yacht This Is It. <laughs> it is a catamaran, 43 meters in length. Uh, and it's got a maximum speed of 21 knots. That is all I know about it, which is based on this sign here. Which I've never seen anything about this before in its build or anything, any, anything. I will find out more uh, as the show goes on. The show's only been open for about half an hour. But uh, yeah, look at that. So I've just been told that we can apply to get access to this boat to actually do a tour. So I think it would be quite interesting to have a look I would really be interested to talk to someone about the technical side of it um, we've got an awful lot of boats lined up for the tour though so I will try my best to get on board uh, over the next four days okay as you've seen by the sign we are now in the section that is known as tenders and toys and as you can see all around me, there are plenty of tenders and some toys as well. That we'll come back to at another point, but I have to warn you, it is electric, which is blasphemy. Um, but yeah, this is where they bring all the toys and, um, and the car deck is just over there as well. So we're gonna look through this in more detail later on. But this behind me here, this is a Brabus 900 Shadow. Now, anybody you who knows these boats will know that they didn't build the boat that's not what Brabus does like that 911 they take a 911 and they customize it you know so it's almost unrecognizable they do the same thing with this yacht here now we did a full tour of this boat uh, in a previous uh, yacht show so if you want to see that uh, I'll put a link in in the in the corner and in the description so you can go and watch that it's a very interesting boat but like I said we're not going to do it again because we've already done it in the past this is the Reva section this is where we were yesterday when i was drilling over the table with reaver written on it and look at the, the even the guy who drives the boat is good looking um he looks vaguely familiar can't quite pinpoint who he is no comments please obviously it's george clooney this is the famous one of one lamborghini reaver this is probably the best boat uh, in the world to me because it's the best of both worlds it was uh, it was custom ordered uh, I believe it was custom ordered by Ferruccio Lamborghini and uh, he put two 
V12 engines in it out of the uh, the car of the time at Lamborghini. There was a video recently posted on, I think Ian Tyrrell, uh, he's a, a car restorer, classic car restorer, and he went to Italy to actually tune the engines because he's, he's got such a reputation for doing that, that they invited him to Italy to tune the engines uh, on this boat. It, it's quite a good video as well. Um, just search for uh, Ian Tyrrell, uh, Riva Lamborghini, you should find it on YouTube. Now, no super yacht is complete without a custom helicopter to go with it. And this is one of those right here. This is from a company called Augusta, as you can see up there. Uh, and I, I, how they got it here, I don't know. I think they must have brought it on a truck because you couldn't land it here. So they must have brought it on a truck and then put the, the roses on and stuff like that. Looks a little bit like the aircraft they used in the TV show Airwolf, doesn't it? Now, trivia question. What was the name of the lead actor in the TV show Airwolf? Don't Google it. Put in the comments below, let me know. See if, you're, see if you know 1980s television, <laughs> giving my age away there. Now, one of the great things they have at the show is they have this floating pontoon, which is joined together. So you can walk right across the marina, which you, you can't normally do on a regular day, uh, but we can use this as a shortcut. So we don't have to go all the way around here to get to the other side of the marina. Well, that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go and check out some of the medium sized yachts that are on show this year. So, here we've got a uh, uh, motor yacht Drizzle. This is a fed ship, a 68 meter, uh, built in 2012, I believe, and it was refit in 2017, which means it's due a refit. Uh, if you can hear that violin playing, it's because there's a woman sat on the stern of this boat playing the violin rather interestingly. I'm not quite sure who her audience is, but there you go. <laughs> so this is a brand new yacht, uh, motor yacht Alchemy it's called, uh, delivered in 2023. It's a 65 metre, or what's that, 210 foot a yacht built by Rossinavi in Italy. Uh, from what I've been told though, the violinist is extra. She does not come with the yacht. <laughs> so if you do buy this yacht and you go down into the tender garage and there's not a woman sat there playing the violin, don't be disappointed, you were warned. This is another brand new yacht. Uh, Moji Yacht Come Together, 2022 uh, build. And it's a 61 meter, so it's what, same sort of 200 foot range. You can see, all laid out very nicely there with the little uh, sea bobs and stuff on the aft deck. Okay, so as you've seen in various uh, iterations, I don't know, uh, various states of preparedness, this is the high street, as I call it. This is where all of the big boys are uh, Heaton, Lurson, Fedship, all of those companies. And this is where you can come and order your brand new yacht. Now, I'm still mulling over a yacht purchase. I haven't, I haven't committed yet, but I'm going to take a walk down the, uh, down the high street and see what is on offer. Okay, so I'm at Lurson. We've got some uh, well-known boats here. Now this one here is Moti Yacht Apo. It's actually at anchor Moti Yacht Apo right now. Now, if you're wondering why it doesn't look so busy right now, because it is not as busy as I might have filmed before in previous years, it's because the first day of the show is not open to the public. It's only open to the press and to, you know, invited guests and stuff like that. So it is quieter today, but the next three days will be open to the public and it'll be a lot busier. Our special mention has to go to Amels and uh, Damon Yachting for bringing this fabulous coffee shop that they brought last year. I talked about it in the, la in the last year's video. Uh, they make absolutely fantastic coffee here and, they and they've got these little cakes as well uh, that you can get. Um, so if you're at the show, uh, come in to the coffee shop, tell them Sisman sent you for a great cup of coffee. This is Silver Yachts. You can see Moti Yacht Bold right here. The video that we did fairly recently on Bold in uh, Cala del Forte in Italy. But like I said, when you uh, come to the show, if you're in the market for a new yacht, you come to this high street for sure. You go in, uh, speak to someone here. You can start the process of ordering a new yacht right here at the show, which is amazing. 
uh, they'll take you upstairs um, to the coveted upstairs area that I've never seen because um, you know they checked my bank balance and they found it had a lot of zeros in it but it had no ones at the beginning so they said uh, no you can't come in um, but this is where you would go up here and then they start to go through you the process of ordering a brand new yacht all right so we've completed our walk of the uh, super yacht super high street as i've just coined it a special mention to amels um for that coffee shop that they have there which is which is really fabulous and it's given me some more energy now so i can continue filming so behind me here is motiot mra2 now i mentioned this boat in a recent video i talked about um I told a story about how I was filming this yacht and the boat left the marina and I followed it here to Monaco uh, and I ended up filming the uh, the build-up for the Formula One Grand Prix uh, at Monaco but I was in the process of chasing this boat because I'd already filmed a load of footage uh, I'll put a link below if you want to go and see that video but it's interesting to see it here the boat is for sale it's a 49 meter uh, Heeson yacht and it's a, a hybrid uh, it's got hybrid motors uh, diesel electric so it's uh, I was just talking to the captain he, he said it's very efficient on fuel so yeah for sale here at the show all right this is a uh, San Lorenzo a Motiot Lars a 46 meter 150 foot now the elephants in the room there would be that submarine <laughs> look at that something you don't see every day sitting on the back of, of, a, of a yacht like that now how many uh, super yacht submarines stopped getting used after that incident at the Titanic recently? I can imagine a lot of uh, super yacht owners suddenly became very uninterested in their submarines after seeing what happened on that deep dive to the Titanic. So yeah, it'd be interesting to, to if we could do a poll of super yacht owners who have submarines, which is more than you would expect actually, but uh, it would be interesting to know how many of them have actually been inside these since that one imploded. Now this yacht behind me here, this is motor yacht Aurelia. Uh, you can see here it's a Heeson build 37 meter yacht. Uh, now we've featured this uh, yacht on the channel before because it's got what is probably possibly the best paint job of any yacht in my opinion of course. It's a Gulf uh, livery paint job and now I was just speaking to somebody from the boat and it is paint because I, I had a feeling it might have been a wrap but that's commitment for you isn't it to uh, paint a yacht in gulf colors now the good news is we've been invited on board to, to have a look around this yacht so we're already jam-packed with uh, yacht visits but I'm going to try and get on board this yacht really interested to see what it's like on board I haven't spent so much, so much time uh, covering it in the past so yeah look out for that one well, that's just showing off, isn't it? Look at that. Helicopter on the stern, uh, sticking out. Well, there's proof here that you don't need a 100 meter yacht to have a helicopter on board. This is Mose Yacht Sea Huntress, and it is a um, 55 meter, which is that 180 foot yacht. And you can see that it's got a decent sized helicopter on board. I think that's a Euro 155 helicopter. Okay, if you're a long term watcher of the, of the channel, you'll know this boat. This is Motor Yacht Force Blue. It's a 70 meter yacht uh, owned by an infamous person, should I say. And we're going to come back to this yacht in a future video when we do the largest yachts of the show, because this is actually in the top 10 largest yachts at the 2023 Monaco Yacht Show. And I'll tell you the backstory. And uh, all of this stuff here, this, this is a, a, sea, a stairs and, this, and the swim platform. This is all new and it was all done uh, in the last couple of years. So it had a big refit recently. So if you're in the market for a yacht, it actually works out well because this has had a major refit. This uh, unusual coloured yacht is a Moti Yacht Leona. It's an 80 meter, which is about 260 foot yacht. Uh, built brand new, built in Turkey by Bilgen Yachts. 2023 delivery, so you know, brand spanking new. Uh, still got the plastic on it, etc. Uh, yeah, brand new yacht here at the show with a very unusual hull colour. Never seen a red hull before on a yacht. So you can see the influence, the Turkish influence on the inside of the yacht uh, with the window shapes there and the way it's all laid out. Very interesting. That's a swimming pool. Very unusual design. 
There is a great shot of the forward tender garage. Now, obviously, with all of that uh, Turkish baths and swimming pool stuff going on in the stern, they've got nowhere to launch their boats from and in that area. So instead, you have this here, which is, it's actually you know not that uncommon to have tenders launched from the bow section here. No doubt it, it doubles as a gym for the crew as well. <laughs> you can see on the other side there, if you just look carefully there, there's another boat which would be launched on the starboard side. You can also see the davit there goes up and along there and that will turn out like this and then they'll lower the boat into the water, which is an interesting design actually. Right, here's another example of a, heli of a, of a smallish uh, super yacht hosting a rather large helicopter up here. This is a 43 meter, which is what, about 150 foot yacht um, flying mantis. And it's got a rather large helicopter on, on there. It's similar to a EC-155, but I believe it's an Airbus H-130 helicopter. So it just shows you don't have to have a massive, you know, Abramovich size super yacht to have your helicopter on board. So at this point of the, uh, the marina, we've got some of the larger vessels of the marina. These are like 65 meters around that size. Uh, we've got the uh, Moti Yacht Polar Star there. It's a 65 meter, which is about uh, 200, uh, 210 feet. Um, and we've got a uh, Moti Yacht Invictus here, which is 66 meter, uh, 216 feet, I think it is. So it's around the 200, uh, 220 foot mark. And then we've got uh, a Lursen boat here, a uh, boat yacht Marguerite, at uh, around 61 meters or so. So it's lunchtime at the Monaco Yacht Show. Now you can go to the upper deck lounge and you can have uh, you know, lobsters and oysters and all that kind of stuff. But I went to the supermarket and I bought a yogurt that's been reduced to one euro. Uh, I'm gonna take that sticker off before I go back in. I'm gonna go in the lounge and eat all my food like I, like I bought it in the lounge, but I actually bought it from the supermarket across the road. But I will take off that one euro sticker so I don't wanna embarrass myself. <laughs> we'll never know. So once you've put down your $10 million for your new yacht, uh, you can come into this pavilion here, just seen by the sign, uh, and you can outfit your yacht with everything. You know, the absolute highest quality, most overpriced espresso machine in the world, leather coated as if you needed that. But you know, anything you desire, uh, you can buy in or you can order it in this pavilion. Uh, you know, every type of fitting, taps, carpets, tiles, windows, everything. And, that, and that's what this pavilion is all about. When we do the yacht tours, uh, when, you, when we put the yacht tours on the channel, try to re remember uh, this, uh, what I'm talking about right now, because it's very hard to get across on camera how every single little thing is, is thought of in depth, you know? Like these are, the, these are door handles here. And, and this, this company you know, works just in making door handles of every possible different type you can imagine. I mean, it's quite incredible, but this is what I'm talking about when you go on a yacht. It's like every single thing on the yacht is, is an expensive item, even a door handle, something that we take for granted uh, in our homes and, and in general, you know, when you go out into the public places, door handles are just a door handle, right? But not on a super yacht, the door handle can be a work of art. And it's great, uh, these, this company is, uh, is from the UK as well. An interesting story about, um, about door handles. I worked on a yacht uh, about 10 years ago and all of the door handles were breaking. It wasn't from this company, by the way, but all of the door handles kept breaking. So we contacted the manufacturer of the door handles to say, hey, you know, these door handles, the doors were so thick, the door handles were a bit fragile and they were breaking. So we contacted the company, we tell them, you know, the door handles are breaking, what's the solution? They sent us back an instruction pamphlet on how to open and close doors. So as you can see, we're in, the, we're in another pavilion now. The previous one was all about fittings and finishes and carpets and leathers and stuff like that. Now we're in a technical uh, pavilion. It's probably got a better name than that, but I'm gonna call it technical pavilion. And you can see we, we've got the Furuno over here. They do the bridge equipment. We've got uh, FLIR cameras here. 
Uh, we've done an uh, interview with Flare in the past. Uh, they are thermal cameras, um, very good. Well, I've fitted these onto, onto Super Yachts in the past. You've got, you've got everything you can imagine in this pavilion. We've got our punch bags here, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, fenders, uh, inflatable fenders. Uh, of every size as you can imagine and one of the things that they do with super yachts because they put this uh, fairing on top of the metal uh, nobody wants to have uh, hooks or things uh, fitted permanently to the side of the ship to hang the fenders on so what they use is something called a fender hook uh, and it's basically like this and it has a, a coating on the inside i think it's sheepskin or sheep uh, wool on the inside and then it sits on top of the side of the vessel and then you can put your fender uh, line into it and hang the fender off the side of the vessel and these get stowed away uh, in, in a cupboard in the storage unit once the boat is underway once you see the boat leaving the marina and they start to pull the fenders in they'll take these down and they'll put the, they'll stow them away uh, for safe you know for safekeeping and that way that uh, they don't damage the side of the yacht we're at the Furuno stand uh, I've done a lot of stuff with Furuno over the years, videos uh, uh, showing how the bridge equipment works and all that stuff. But one of the things that's just caught my eye is this uh, chart table. This is a 21st century chart table. I get, not even that long ago, the chart table would be a table and you would lay your paper charts on it and then you would use a magnifying glass you know, to, uh, to uh, look at the charts in depth and then plot your charts uh, on, that, on, that ch on that paper chart, right? But now we've got this, which is essentially, it's Google Maps for your bridge. So it's just, you know, just like what you would think. So you can zoom right out and then you can come in. Now what the difference is between this table, and you've got all your bits here, the difference is, is that you can, you can actually plot your chart on here. So you can zoom right in as well, of course. And you can plot your chart on here and then you can send it over to the navigational bridge. That's, that's quite impressive. Uh, and it's got some other features, it tilts and raises up and down as well. What we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to get uh, one of the experts to show us how this table works. We'll do that uh, in a couple of days time. I'm outside the Lurson uh, shop. Uh, I'm going to wrap up this video here. I hope we've given you a good idea of what it's like to be at the Monaco Yacht Show. Uh, I've packed as much into this video as I can. Now, tomorrow we're going to be doing something a little different. Now, last year we did a video and it was the uh, largest yacht of the show. Didn't go so well. We tried to do a live cast of it. We're not going to do that again, but we're going to film it in a sort of one take type video and we're going to post that uh, sometime tomorrow and that will be all the largest boats we've looked at a couple of them already but we're going to give you more detail and we're going to go around all of the boats there's, i think there's about eight of the largest boats uh, at the show and we're going to go through them all tomorrow so uh, look out for that video and again i hope you've enjoyed our, our day at the this the first day of the monaco yacht show and uh, yeah be sure to come back to watch the rest of the videos to come if you've enjoyed this video please be sure to like it and subscribe so you don't miss any of the other videos that are coming. All right, guys, thanks very much. Bye-bye.